Hi everyone. Thank you once again for tuning in into our session. Uh, my name is Ying Ying. I'm from SG Tech. So welcome to our Go Global webinar series covering ASEAN on tech opportunity on Thailand's legal landscape and tax regime. So this session is actually the last of our six uh, webinars featuring three ASEAN markets. So we have covered Indonesia and Thailand, uh, uh, Vietnam previously. So today we are doing the second one for Thailand. So this session is organized together with Orisa International and also supported by Western Union Business Solutions. So yesterday we actually learned about the exciting tech scene in Thailand and that Bangkok will be the best option for tech startups seeking opportunities in the country. But other than that, there's also a, an interesting trend where tech talents remotely work from the beautiful islands of Phuket or Koh Samui and only travel to Bangkok where required. So today, we'll get to hear more about the different uh, regions of um, Thailand from our Board of Investment, as well as the Digital Economy Promotion Agency, and find out more about the exciting tech opportunities, as well as the regulations in Thailand. So just a gentle reminder, this webinar is being recorded for marketing and archival purposes. And all audience, you may post your questions in the Q&A box. We will actually answer the Q&A at the end after we have completed the presentations for today. So let us begin by welcoming our first speaker, Mr. Narucha. He's the Acting Senior Executive Investment Advisor at the Thailand Board of Investment. He started his career at the Office of Thailand Board of Investment in 1986 and has held many important posts, including the Director and Counsel at the Thailand Board of Investment LA office in the US from 2005 to 2009. And he's also the director of BOI unit for industrial linkage development and also um, the uh, director and console at the Osaka office in Japan. And most recently, he was uh, the director of investment promotion bureau for the creative and digital industries from 2017 to 2020. Mr. Narucha earned his bachelor and master degree of engineering from the Chang Kong University the Advanced Certificate course in Public Economic Management for Executives from the King's Institute and the Civil Service Executive Development Program, Visionary and Moral Leadership from the Office of Civil Commission. So let's welcome Mr. Narucha, please. So uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's such a great honor for me to uh, participate in the webinar this morning. I have to thank the SC Tech for inviting me to join in this morning and to share the information with the uh, SC Tech community. So uh, with no further ado, I would like to start off my presentation. Let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, so uh, my presentation will be on, on the tax and legal landscape for tech companies in Thailand. And uh, my presentation today will consist of the uh, four parts. So first, I would like to give you a picture of the uh, Thailand's economy. And I have so some- Mr. we cannot see your screen yet. Oh, uh, what's that? Yeah. Hold on. Can you see it now? No, nope, not yet. Hold on. Okay, what about one? this one? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, my presentation will consist of four parts. So first I would like to give you the uh, picture of the Thailand's economy, uh, which I have some figure to show you, uh, and particularly the Thailand's economy during the pandemic. And then I will touch upon a little bit on the digital industry uh, ecosystem, which uh, digital technology seems to be a significant part of the uh, many industry. And then I'm going to introduce the Thailand Board Investment, or we simply call the BOI, uh, particularly for those of you who are not familiar with the BOI. Actually, we are working uh, exactly the same thing that uh, 
the EDB in, in Singapore do. And then last but not least, I will uh, show you what we have here in Thailand to facilitate the uh, foreign investment. Let's have a look on the Thailand's economy. Uh, last year, uh, our economy was contracted by 6.1%. This is the uh, probably due to the uh, pandemic of the uh, COVID-19. And this effect uh, happened not only in Thailand, I believe that is affect the uh, all the country uh, around the globe. And then uh, our export growth went down to 6.5%. Uh, so right now we try to stimulate the uh, domestic consumption while the uh, global market is still in the face of recovery. It's going to take quite some time. And anyway, uh, at the end of this year, we expect uh, our economy to be grow uh, by 0.8%. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in this slide, it become 4.8. Actually, it is 0.8%. And the uh, export growth will be around 16%. After we see a, a very positive sign of recovery. And um, for the uh, tax rate in Thailand, the uh, corporate income tax rate in Thailand is 20% of the net profit. And the value added tax rate in Thailand is 7%. So when compared to tax rates of the uh, our neighboring country in the region, you can see that Thailand is the position that is still quite competitive. And for personal income tax rate in Thailand, it's rating from the 5% to 35% progressive free. So it depends on how much you earn. The more you earn, here, the higher rate that you have to pay. And let's have a look on the digital industry ecosystem in Thailand. Uh, you probably might have heard a lot about the Thailand 4.0, which is the Thailand new economics model, which aim to drive economic growth through technology and innovation. So right now we would like to transform uh, many sectors in Thailand, for example, the uh, manufacturing sector, agriculture sector or even the service sector to be a smart sector by uh, utilizing the digital technology. This is uh, in order to remain, uh, our country to remain competitive. And we are also promoting the uh, digital economy and we expect the digital economy to be around 25% of the, our GDP by 2027. So we are now in terms of laying down the uh, digital infrastructure foundation. For example, that we need to increase the Thailand domestic cable bandwidth and also upgrading existing the submarine cable system and also constructing a new one as well. And we are now in the process of establishing the digital park of Thailand, uh, which is located in the uh, Eastern Economic Corridor or we simply call it EEC, which will be a new economic cluster. So I believe that probably the, our next speaker will have more details on that. And the population in Thailand is around 69 million, while we have the affordable subscription, uh, almost 100 million. The end user in Thailand is almost 50 million. And last year, the, uh, we have students study in I ICT uh, around 70,000. So uh, when considering the uh, uh, digital awareness. I think Thailand is still in a good position as well. And during the uh, pandemic of COVID-19, we have seen acceleration of digital transformation across Thailand. So people uh, spend more time online and we becoming familiar with using e-mailing and e-learning platform. And many companies had introduced the automation system in order to remain competitive. And we have seen the increase of the cyber threat so that will force many companies to invest more on the cybersecurity and uh, the number of dependent transactions will be increased. Uh, this probably uh, people uh, uh, more uh, shopping more online, uh, why they need to uh, stick to the uh, uh, work from home measure and the government has placed strong emphasis on the digital infrastructure uh, project. And uh, we keep improving uh, digital hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. So for the hard infrastructure, according to the uh, uh, digital economy, uh, Ministry of Digital Economy and Society, 
in the next couple of years, the, uh, all the uh, people across the country will be able to access to the Hi-Fi internet. And we are now moving to the 5G uh, to cope with the, uh, the new emerging of the uh, high technology. And for soil infrastructure, last year, the uh, National Legislative Assembly has passed the uh, six digital related bills. Uh, this will be the, I think, the cornerstone for functioning the digital economy in China. And the government has launched the, uh, both the uh, e-service platform and the payment platform in order to increase the cashless society and provide the uh, support directly to the Thai people. So right now, I would like to introduce the, uh, the Thailand Board Investment. The BUI is in the investment promotion agency that I mentioned earlier that uh, we are doing the same thing as the EDB in Singapore. And we are under the Prime Minister Office and our role is to manage investment promotion according to the policy from the board, which is chaired by the Prime Minister himself. And uh, what we are doing is that we encourage investment into Thailand by offering tax and non-tax incentives. For tax incentives, for example, uh, we're planning the corporate income tax exemption for up to eight years for the uh, basic incentive. And in some cases, the company might get 50% uh, reduction of corporate income tax after the exemption period for additional incentive. And we're also granting the exemption on import duty on machinery and the uh, import duty on the raw materials as well. So uh, for, for non-tech incentives, uh, that would be the incentive that make your life easier when you are visit in, here in Thailand. Uh, for example, that the, according to the Foreign Visit Act, the, there may be some restriction in some activities, particularly the uh, certain activities. So uh, the BUI could grant a waiver for those restrictions. That means the promoted project, the almost promoted company, can be 100% for foreign ownership here in Thailand, or even have the, uh, the, may, uh, the foreign uh, major share in that company. And as we have liberalized our investment regime, so no uh, uh, foreign currency restriction. And the, uh, under the land court in Thailand, uh, foreign company will not be able to buy land or own land. You may, may be able to uh, buy a condo or to, to rent a, a land, but you, you will not be able to buy land or own land. But under the BUI promotion, you have the right to own land or buy land here in Thailand. And for those of you who operate business here in Thailand, sometimes you might need to bring in the uh, technician or expert. And uh, according to the regulation of the uh, 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 immigration department of the uh, Ministry of Labor, uh, we call the, uh, the one to four ratio. That means every single of the expert or technician that you bring in, you need to employ a four Thai people. And every single of the uh, technician or expert that you bring in, you need to have at least two million uh, digital capital. That would, you know, uh, cause the tough time to the, the company. But under the BUI promotion, uh, uh, you, you don't have to go along with that uh, criteria of regulation. But we will give you a number of the expert or technician as easy and appropriate. Okay. That's, that's the, the non-tax incentive that we're planning uh, for the uh, promoted uh, company. And this is uh, how we grant incentive to the company. Uh, on your left-hand side, be the uh, basic incentive or standard incentive, while your right-hand side will be additional incentives. Uh, for the standard incentive, uh, we can grant the uh, corporate income tax exemption up to eight years. So the number of years will depend on what you do here in Thailand. Normally, we were looking at the uh, the level of the technology or, or the, uh, the role of your product in, in supply chain. And for those of you who uh, have the activities that we call the develop development of the targeted coin that technology here in Thailand, you might get the 10-year uh, corporate income tax exemption. Uh, right now, we are focusing on four areas, which are the biotechnology, digital technology, nanotechnology, and advanced material technology. But the thing is that, we have the condition that you need to engage with the uh, technology transfer by collaborating with the educational institution here in Thailand. And uh, after you get the basic incentive, 
some of you might not satisfy with that, you may need to get the additional incentive that uh, we offer some option for you to go. The third option is that you have the expense on some certain activities. For example, that you have expense on the research and development, or you spend on uh, advanced technology training, or to do some product and packaging design, and we uh, give you the additional incentive. Or you may decide to locate that your operation in some certain areas, such as EEC, which is covering in three provinces in uh, eastern part of Thailand, or located your operation in the uh, SEZ uh, that uh, would cover 10 provinces along the border of Thailand. And for agenda based uh, measure that would kind of the short term measure, for example, the investment stimulation measure that we would, would give the uh, additional incentive for the project that uh, have the invest, actual investment at least 1 million baht within the uh, period that we uh, set. So probably this slide uh, give you more understandable uh, of the uh, how we can incentive. The B incentive mean not corporate income tax and tax exemption. A incentive mean uh, corporate income tax exemption, which is run from three year, five year, or, or eight years. And uh, I would like to touch upon a little bit on digital industry promotion category. Uh, since the uh, digital industry is the one of our targeted industry, so there are quite a number of the activities in our uh, list of promotable activities, uh, ranging from the digital infrastructure, uh, such as submarine cable, digital park, digital center, or cloud services to the digital activities such as software development, platform services, and digital content. And we're also promoting the activity that would enhance the digital ecosystem. So, uh, and uh, as the, I mentioned earlier that digital industry is one of our targeted industry. So I can assure you that the incentive that we grant is quite attractive. And uh, we are not only uh, encouraging investment into Thailand, but also to make sure that the existing company in Thailand to improve their productivity. So this scheme might be good uh, for the non-BUI company or even the BUI company that the uh, corporate income tax exemption incentive has really been exhausted. They come back, can come back to the BUI and request for a new batch of incentive. So, uh, but what they need to do is that they need to make an investment that would lead to the uh, improvement of their productivities, such as to introduce the automation system or to use the digitization or to invest in the uh, renewable energy or energy saving machinery, or even uh, last but not least, to replace the machinery by using the machinery that have less the uh, greenhouse gas emission. And then we give another batch of incentive. So let's have a look on the investment facilitation here. We have the center, so-called the uh, one star one stop investment center, uh, located right in the middle of the Bangkok, and it's very easily accessible. And the idea is that we get together the representative from different agency uh, sitting under one roof and uh, provide a service. That means the uh, investor can uh, get the uh, several permits in one go. For example, that you might uh, do your company registration and then apply for the visa and work permit at the same time. And for the uh, visa, visa and work permit, if you want to promote a company, we have this special uh, uh, fast track. That means after the uh, completion of the document, we can commit that we can uh, issue the visa and work permit within three hours. So this uh, would help save time and make your contact uh, more efficient. And last but not least, I would like to uh, touch upon about the smart visa. The smart visa is a, the special type of visa. It's not the non-B visa. It's a visa that uh, a kind of have the uh, special privilege. For example, uh, uh, the visa holder will get maximum four year of visa instead of the two years maximum that we uh, normally give to the uh, foreigner. And the permission to work uh, with no uh, work permit required. That's why sometimes we call smart visa as a working visa. And uh, no reality uh, requires well. You can uh, go out and uh, come in 
any as as frequent as uh, we want, then uh, you can enjoy the uh, the fast uh, track service at the international airport. And normally, we need the, uh, the visa holder to report to immigration department every 90 days. But for the uh, smart visa holder, we will extend that uh, to one year. That would, you know, uh, help the more convenient to the uh, visa holder. And there will be a five group of the uh, smart visa holder that could enjoy this special privilege. The first one is just the uh, expert or the talent. The criteria is that uh, you need to be expert on site or technology that's very broad right and um, for the uh, smart a is just a city executive you have you need to have the uh, bachelor degree in targeted industry a uh, background and uh, uh, the uh, at least one year of the employment contract and the revenue at least two hundred thousand baht a month uh, let's say uh, right now the the, uh, the uh, 24 baht is around one uh, Singapore dollars for the uh, smart eye is an investor, you need to have the 20 million uh, uh, baht through VC or 5 million baht through the uh, startup. For startup uh, company, there will be three levels. The first level, that you will gain the six months of the uh, visa. Uh, only you have the, uh, the uh, uh, startup is the plan. And if you like to get the one year visa, you need to have the uh, 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 kind of participation in the integration or uh, accelerator program and also have the 600,000 baht in your saving account no matter here in Thailand or you are in your home country and if you like to get two years of visa you need to uh, kind of have the uh, at least 25 percent share in the startup company on, and or being a director of the company and last but not least one is smart or the business power of the children of the smart visa holder which they can also enjoy the same privilege of the smart visa holder. So that will end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Narucha. Next up, let's welcome Mr. Ch uh, Dr. Chinuwat from the from DIPA. So Dr. Chinuwat is the Executive Vice President of the Digital Unit at the Digital Economic Promotion Agency. Dr. Chinawat has been in the startup and innovation ecosystem for many years. And prior to joining DIPA, he was holding stints in the Science Policy Office, National Technology and Innovation, as well as the Startup Thailand. Dr. Chinawat also co-founded and was the Executive Director of Nawat Hospital. So let's welcome Dr. Chinawat, please. Hi. This moment, let me share my screen. Okay, should see my screen already, right? Yes. Very go on. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you, Kunarisha and the host as well. Kunarisha is already explained a lot of things. Um, that BY has been um, uh, uh, promoted, uh, especially in terms of data economy, uh, for Thailand. And uh, thank you, the host. And uh, I'm very proud that uh, today I invite you to speak to you. Um. Um, so I, I try to give some of the updates on how Thailand is look like in terms of digital economy. Um, so my topics will be on um, digital transformation in Thailand, also the smart city projects that have been um, doing a lot here at Nepa. Um, so uh, let me start um, with the, some of the figures. Um, I think you already show, um, see that uh, in uh, two days ago, the IMD just announced a new um, um, uh, ranking for uh, uh, digital economy worldwide. And Thailand has been in, uh, uh, I think, uh, four consecutive years that we have been improved in the ranking to number 38, despite we still uh, have to um, uh, catch up with, with Singapore and Malaysia, for example. But um, uh, we are improving in all the dimensions, especially in terms of ecosystem and infrastructure. Um, so uh, uh, if you look into deep dive into why you have to, uh, uh, Thailand is quite a, a good market to invest in terms of digital um, transformation and also in other uh, digital solutions. Uh, we have quite uh, impressive uh, numbers and figures. For example, we are right now top 20 uh, smartphone users um, um, based in the world. Um, uh, people are enjoying, I mean, online a lot with uh, average about 8.5 hours per day. 
uh, which is also top 20 in the world. We have the fastest internet um, uh, connection uh, in the fixed broadband. We have a quite very active in terms of uh, mobile usage, including mobile payments at number two, mobile commerce adoption at number two of the world, and also uh, we are one of the uh, uh, highest uh, usage for the mobile banking in the world, which is 68% uh, 68 of our uh, internet users in Thailand already adopt uh, mobile uh, banking uh, uh, solutions. Also, uh, if you look into uh, what Thailand has been in the past uh, few years, um, uh, we have seen a growing numbers in investment and also in the revenues for the digital service business, especially uh, we have been seeing a lot of growth in terms of uh, transforming from on-premise um, solutions to on-cloud solutions, which is uh, the cloud computing and the um, cloud business has been growing a lot, uh, especially for digital startups and digital service providers. Um, so with that figures, uh, Thailand has set up uh, a new organization called NEPA, which is uh, here, um, uh, the Digital Economy Promotion Agency about five years ago. In terms, uh, we, with our mandate to promote uh, the transformation of the country into the digital economy. Uh, so we are working um, uh, right now in terms of others to promote Thailand in all dimensions uh, to adopt digital technology. Um, to have a better uh, living society and also to give our uh, opportunity for our, especially entrepreneurs at all levels from micro enterprises, SMEs, startups to large corporates in Thailand to be able to adopt uh, digital technology to provide a new solutions and find a new competitive advantage. And also we welcome uh, digital investment from all around the world. Um, so we help, uh, we facilitate we try to be able to help um, you guys to be able to set up in Thailand. Um, so right now, DEPA is operate across the countries. We have branches office across uh, 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 every um, continent in Thailand. And also, we also have our um, uh, um, um, uh, several specialized institutes under DEPA working to help you uh, 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 um, to be able to set up digital business in Thailand. For example, we have digital startup still to promote startups specifically. We have the IoT, IoT and digital innovation still to promote um, uh, digital technology and digital, digital innovations in Thailand. We have the government big data and still GBDI to um, uh, help with the uh, uh, big data solutions um, uh, uh, and help uh, to fa facilitate uh, the big data um, um, framework between governments and also uh, private sector as well. So what we try to do in last five years is that we try to um, um, uh, give Thailand uh, a better ecosystem and environments uh, to be able to support our digital business to be operated here in Thailand. For building the manpower, we know that we have the lack of manpower, so that is very our first priority that we have to build the manpower from digital users to be understand with the usage of digital products to uh, specialized manpower professionals, um, to executives to understand how they can invest and manage resource to support digital business and digital growth for the companies and organizations. Um, then we also uh, have a high hope to transform Thailand to a digital economy. So we help SMEs across the countries help um, uh, micro enterprises, farmers, um, and other entrepreneurs across the country to be able to adopt digital solutions. This is provided by digital startups and digital uh, service providers that we supported. Then we also trying to promote uh, communities across Thailand to be able to be able to use digital solutions as well to be digitized, um, to have the inclusive growth for the countries. Um, and then we also trying to build a better um, infrastructure, digital infrastructure for the country, from building smart cities to um, providing a big data infrastructure to providing other uh, digital infrastructure to support growth for the economy. Uh, we're working on the five key agendas, including smart cities, um, uh, digital startups, 
promote them to be able to uh, uh, provide solutions for uh, uh, all the sectors. Then we also have the uh, big project called Thailand DWA, which is I will explain later. Uh, we have the uh, high hope, as I said, to develop uh, digital manpower in the countries. And also we are trying to um, transform other sectors, all the indigenous sectors and all sectors in Thailand to be able to adopt digital uh, technology and then uh, come up with a better efficient pro uh, business process and also new opportunity um, uh, in digital era. Then uh, what our work paradigm, working paradigm, as I said, that we're trying to, to help, I mean, promote and trying to uh, have the uh, digital providers and digital startups here in Thailand. Um, with the, all the uh, mechanisms that we're trying to do for starting from um, capacity building, investment, and also uh, networking, uh, and also uh, easy to do business for foreign startups to be able to settle here. And then we promote them, the startup and providers with the standard. For example, we have other programs called um, uh, digital standard promotions like ISO uh, 29110 to be able to uh, 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 to to be able to promote startups to have higher standard so they can get to the international market as well as the government markets in Thailand as well. Then with this list of uh, uh, high potential startups and digital providers, we can help them to. Uh, uh, get connect with the markets to able to transform our MSMEs, industries, communities, and agriculture sector in Thailand, which is quite big. Um, uh, apart from that, we have, as I said, that uh, we also have a programs to promote digital literacy, um, to promote uh, professional um, digital manpowers, um, and we we'll, uh, have uh, running a lot of programs for them and also the experts as well. And uh, we also um, have a, a target to build smart city across Thailand to be able to uh, uh, become a de demand um, a generator for digital startup solutions. So uh, uh, right now we are also working a lot on smart city mission. I will explain later. Um, this is some of the mechanisms that we have in place for, uh, for example, for digital startup for investment. Uh, to capacity building like a DeFi jump start program. We have accelerator program um, for our smart city accelerator and also game accelerator program, which is run, running right now. We have programs like a uh, um, standardized program for startups uh, to promote digital standard like ISO IEC 29110 or CMMI. Then they will be list on our digital service provider um, list. And then they can provide digital transformation for service and provide service to um, both SMEs and government sector alike. Um, uh, for Thailand, uh, in the past five years, we have seen growing um, numbers of supports, not just only DEPA, for especially digital business and digital startups. So right now, at all status, uh, despite our uh, late um, coming, in terms of uh, promoting digital business um, and digital startups. Right now, we are quite have a strong ecosystem to support startup at all state of development from uh, entrepreneurial mindset to um, making R&D prototyping to launch the business at early step, then also at uh, a, a later stage as well. So in the past five years, uh, the digital startups uh, uh, ecosystem in Thailand has been very bright, vibrant and this year is the first time that we get two unicorns, uh, which is Frank Express and Big Cup. Um, this is some of the lists that I say I talk about digital service providers that we have in place in here at DEPA that we register. So to become a digital service provider in DEPA, you uh, we also enjoy um, a benefits that the government provided for you. For example, we have the startup fund, and we have the transformation fund, which is uh, we provide to SMEs and and also um, some more um, uh, micro entrepreneurs to be able to use these as a service. Then uh, the government also provide what we call the tax incentives, uh, tax 200%. So you can deduct uh, uh, the expense that you pay for digital service provider that we sell with us for two times. 
for example. So we try to boost up the market for digital service provider and digital startup as well. So this is how we try to promote uh, and get connected in terms of demand side support for startups and digital providers. And also we try to promote um, our digital providers, uh, whether it's going to be um, foreign startups, here it is in Thailand, or our uh, thai grown startup as well, will be able to connect with the government because we're trying to um, help on the government demands. Uh, for example, uh, we have a travel check staff list that working with mostly with Thailand Authority, uh, Tourism Authority or TAT. Uh, we have a, a legal tech startup and also a, um, um, FinTech startup who are working with um, uh, the revenue department right now. We have the uh, health tech startup and other startups to work with the um, uh, this Department of Disease Control and also Ministry of Public Health in Thailand as well. So in the past, there are a number of foreign staff who want to set up a business in Thailand and come here to DEPA as well to have, have us link uh, with the government sectors and government agencies. Um, in Thailand, actually, if you can uh, uh, perceive uh, in a lot of news, um, digital science transformation in Thailand is quite unique that has been led by uh, proactive Thai big corporates and conglomerates. All the conglomerates and big corporates in Thailand right now, I think um, they are compete on um, uh, reinvent themselves, uh, think as a startups and working closely with all the startups and private sectors. Um, so what the Thai conglomerates and Thai uh, big business has been doing is that they have built it from uh, have their own CVC corporate venture capital arms investing worldwide. They have the internal venture building program. They have the partnership program, a lot of other partnership programs working with startups and digital service providers to come up with the new solutions. So if you're comparing to other ASEAN um, uh, uh, markets, you will see that Thai big corporates are quite fast and quite very active in terms of investment. We can witness, for example, in the past uh, few weeks, that there are a lot of initiatives uh, that has been um, uh, uh, enacted by the digital, uh, uh, by the large corporate in Thailand. For example, we have a quite uh, very uh, web brand startup communities, which is called True Digital Park, which is run by the large conglomerate in Thailand, CP Group. And then, in the news, you might see that uh, SCB, which is one of the largest banks in Thailand, already transformed themselves into SBX. And um, they transformed from just a normal uh, um, traditional bank into a tech company already and invest in extensively in startup as well. Uh, for example, with the one deals uh, of uh, the second unicorns in Thailand, which is called BitCup. Um, blockchain company and uh, crypto exchange platform. So with this deal, uh, we can become the second unicorn for Thailand. And then other banks, for example, like KBDT, they have the um, quite um, unique ecosystem and they are very really popular with the uh, individual users and also SMEs. So they have the largest, uh, for example, mobile banking base that uh, giving them a chance to become super apps and other super apps in Thailand as well. Um, so obviously it's not limited. For example, the PTT group um, uh, led by the PTT exploration company, PTEP, also set up another fund, uh, VC funds, uh, with 500 um, startups to be invest in Sabia here uh, in Thailand and in the regions called Austin Venture. Um, this is another home that I see, I, I, uh, I can show that um, uh, the corporate um, activities in Thailand is, is pretty intensive and there's a lot of activities. For example, yesterday also, uh, one of the largest bank in Thailand, BBL, Bangkok Bank, uh, joined hands with the WHA group, which is running a menu, uh, logistic and um, industrial assets across Thailand. Invest in another logistic startup logistic in Serie B. And also the WHA group also working with Task Park in China to set up this incubation center right here in Bangkok. Um, so if you can see that uh, it's quite an active uh, atmosphere here in Thailand, um, especially to work with the corporates in Thailand, that they are always looking for chances to work with uh, tech 
providers and solution providers across the region to be set up here and also to provide solutions to Thai customers base and also expand to other markets as well. Um, as I said, that uh, not just Yipa trying to promote digital startup, digital business. We also trying to build a better manpower. So we're working with our partners and we welcome partners from around the world to work with us in terms of trying to uh, build a better, I mean, uh, um, digital manpower base in here in Thailand from reskilling, upskilling and provide them with new skills. As you can see that we work with Grab, we work with uh, C, Group, Garina, we work with um, Microsoft, Intel, Salesforce and others, Google's, to be able to provide the training programs and capacity programs to enhance um, um, digital manpower in Thailand. So this is a lot of opportunities here. And also in terms of regulations and infrastructures in Thailand that Kunarsha may be mentioned already a little bit. Um, so there are uh, quite progress um, in terms of how we pro, uh, co create a new uh, digital ecosystem in Thailand from having the world very first digital asset laws to having the new digital platform uh, service on the DPSB, which is going to be enacted very soon. Uh, we have the PDPA, PDPA, uh, PDPA law, Pro, uh, Personal Data Protection Act, which is going to be uh, in effect next year. Then we have introduced what we call the issue is tech business tax team as well for, by the revenue department. The Secure Action Commission also uh, come up with uh, solutions for SMEs and startups to be able to raise funds from VC with the private uh, placement for SME and startup scheme or PPSME. And as Kunarisha already mentioned, we have the Smart Visa program. And also next year, we hope we're going to have another LTR. Um, long-term resident program coming as well. Um, not, not just that the uh, governance structure in Thailand and public agency is trying to come up with the new regulations to support digital business across the country. We come up with the infrastructure, for example, sandboxes to be able to support startups, um, to be able to try and order here in Thailand as well. For example, EDA, which is called Electronic Transaction uh, Development Agency. Um, uh, they already introduced what we they call the digital service sandbox that uh, having the digital service business to be able to trial and error in some, some other area that uh, have been regulated. Then the Bank of Thailand also have the FinTech sandbox um, working from starting working from QR payments, um, crypto payments to blockchain projects. Then the OIC Office of Insurance Commission also have insurance regulatory sandbox here. And the revenue department or RD also have the tech sandbox here. And also we have the quite uh, uh, progress in the uh, other digital infrastructure, including the digital ID and the e-business registration as well. Um, apart from the soft infrastructure and legal infrastructure that we have been uh, um, improved in the past few years, we also provide at their part uh, what we believe to be a crucial digital infrastructure for the future. So we co-invest and we partner with a lot of corporates and, and other um, academic institute, institutions and uh, also uh, other um, uh, entrepreneurs in Thailand to build up digital infrastructure across the country. For example, we already have the Thailand 5G EIC ecosystem center to be a test bed for 5G applications here in the Lipa building. We have co invest with the uh, PTT group, with Tech University, um, setting up what we call the AI Research Institute or with uh, uh, or <clears throat> Uh, DIPA, which take AI research in still um, to support uh, AI development here in Thailand. We have co invest with a number of startups to build uh, the arena, sports stadiums, e-sports stadiums, e-sports facilities um, to uh, promote uh, gaming and digital content industry in Thailand, for example. Um, we also trying to work in terms of provide a better big data framework for uh, 
any visits to here uh, to set up in Thailand and work with the uh, utilize the big data. We already already provide what we call the government data service framework, and then uh, we already start working in terms of uh, uh, a number of sectors, uh, big data sectors, including including health tech, is uh, including health data and the travel data. Another big project that we have been promoted in the EEC area is in the Canary Corridor is what we call EECD or Digital Park Thailand. And part of that, the anchor investor are DEPA, that we are trying to uh, build this uh, so-called uh, mega uh, infrastructure called Thailand Digital Valley um, with an uh, area about uh, 100,000 uh, um, square meters. Um, as a place to be able to support the growth of digital business in the area to strengthen the ecosystem and to provide the opportunities for startups and corporates to work together to build a better um, digital solutions. So it's located right in Sierra Cha district um, in the heart of the EC area. Uh, we have five buildings over there and the second building will be finished very soon. The third building, which is the largest building, we will uh, uh, <clears throat> will be construct and finish within two years. So this is another place that you can also uh, look at, into for opportunities to expand to Thailand. And with that, in the EEC area, um, there is uh, we also enjoy if you set up the business there, you also enjoy the maximum benefit that EEC and BY has to offer as well. Um, for in terms of smart cities, uh, DIPA is a national secretariat in terms of smart city development in Thailand. Uh, for in terms of smart city, what we're trying to do is that we know that uh, for starting smart city in Thailand, we define as two ways. The first is the old city, and the second is the new city. And the old city and new city has to be livable, has to be efficient, has to be um, sustainable using the digital technologies. In terms of DEPA, DEPA is trying to promote the development of smart cities across the countries uh, with uh, seven schemes, including smart environment, which is um, the prerequisite for our cities in order to be smart. They have to invest in terms of environment. Um, and then in terms of smart living, how they can be safer, build a safer city, better living cities, Smart people, how they can invest in people, smart governance, how the cities and um, governance structure can be better, smart economy, how they can provide a better um, economic uh, models for the future, and then smart mobility, how they can commute better in the city, and also smart energy, how we can have uh, energy efficiency and uh, promote renewable energy in the city as well. So some cities may choose to do a few uh, in priorities. Some city may uh, trying to achieve all the goals of being becoming a smart city as well. Right now we have 50 proposals already in our hands and 15, uh, uh, 15 cities already approved as a smart city in Thailand. Across the country, you can see the flag over there. Um, and also, uh, most of the cities are old cities, and we have also have five new cities in the proposal as well. So, smart city incentive, uh, Kunarisha already mentioned about BOSI incentive that you will get. And for the smart city promotions uh, as the area development and system development uh, uh, business, you can also enjoy this BOI benefits as well. We also provide the fundamental of, of understanding how to promote smart cities across the country as well with the online courses. And also we have the ambassadors across the country to promote smart cities, to get people understand in terms of how they can manage, manage data better, how we can come up with a better city data platform, how they can have enable in the uh, uh, local governance ecosystem to be able to come up with a, um, a good plan to build smart cities. 
We also have a program, for example, like a smart city accelerator program that we run as a proof of concept program that we bring startup to work directly with cities to come up with the solutions and get the procurement connection between them. Uh, this is one of the examples that uh, of the smart city has already been approved. This is called Samyan Smart City right here in the heart of Bangkok, running by Jula Yongkong University, basically, which is anchor tenants over there. Um, so they built starting from a green and clean city, build a smart environment, build a new parks, um, um, uh, trying to get uh, carbon neutral neutrality in the area. Uh, they have the smart economy. Uh, they have the places for startup to be able to uh, grow. A lot of new innovative business over there and a lot of support in the area. They come up with the smart energy solutions from using uh, renewable green energy to be able to support energy and uh, energy tech startup to be able to provide solutions for the tenants. And then they also are working a lot with a lot of staff, for example, like Move Me and other uh, corporates like Toyota to build a better smart mobility projects over there that can be expand later to other smart cities as well. They have the smart living solution as well um, that um, a, a lot of solutions coming up from startups from having a uh, queuing solutions for restaurants, hawkers around countries. Uh, around, around the areas and that it can be expanded to the country around the country as well. Or uh, even the technology to reduce PM 2.5. Um, so the solution can be adopted uh, regionally later as well. So that's the end of my presentation. I hopefully, hopefully you can uh, see some of the progress and development in Thailand in terms of digital transformation and so our initiative on smart city projects. Thank you, Dr. Chinawat, for the very nice presentation. It seems like Thailand's ecosystem is really very vibrant right now. Okay, so we'll invite our panelists back to the session for Q&A. Meanwhile, part, uh, audience, if you have any questions, do post them in the Q&A box so that we can address them. So I do see a few questions right now. Um, first question maybe is directed to BOI, a very text specific kind of question. So it's a Singapore software company with no office in Thailand. So they have been selling through Thai partners. So they are inquiring what kind of taxes should they be taking into account? And what is the applicable tax rate? Secondly, if they were to sell directly to Thai customers without partners, Will there still be taxes and what is the tax rate for it? Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, according to the revenue department, I, I, I've heard that the, uh, from the 1st of September last year, they has announced that uh, they're going to collect the so-called the e-service tax. So this is the particularly applied to any company that they have the entity uh, outside of Thailand but they provide service on, on, on sale of their the, uh, digital service in, in Thailand. And I, I believe that software is a, a kind of form of the digital service that, that they mentioned in the announcement. So that's been from the 1st of September, the company that have entity outside of Thailand who provide the digital service in Thailand need to pay the so-called e-service tax, which is 7%, the same as the uh, the uh, uh, VAT uh, in Thailand. No matter they sell to their uh, partner or they sell directly to their customer. But what they need to do is that they need to make a registration online for the revenue department. So they may visit the revenue department website and then they will have a link, the so-called VES, VAT for electronic services, and then do a registration. Okay, thanks very much. So I hope that answers your question. Um, the next question I see from Geraldine Teo. Um, I think this is directed to Deepa. Uh, I believe you, you have also shared in your presentation some of the POC and co-innovation projects 
So maybe you can elaborate a little bit about the examples of successful collaborations between startups and the corporates. And also maybe you can share some tips and highlight which are the key corporates in Thailand that will be open to do co-innovation with maybe specifically Singapore startups. And maybe if there are any sectors that will be more welcomed. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think um, all the conglomerates in right, Thailand, they, they see this opportunity as a competition. So they try to open up their, I mean, um, their, their uh, space for working with startups. There are uh, quite a number of successful cases, for example, that I mentioned about Gistic. This has been invested by the venture capital called Adventures, running by SCG Group, which is uh, one of the largest conglomerates in Thailand, the CMC main group. So they provide the solution or the logistic solutions, and then has been, although that solution also has, has been expanded to Vietnam, for example. Um, then other cases, uh, maybe in case of uh, SCB, that they're working a lot with uh, a number of startups, um, foreign startups as well. Uh, for example, they provide um, some of solutions. Um, they invest in Ripple and uh, quite successful in terms of um, uh, starting to do some of the foreign transactions and foreign um, uh, exchange as well in, in that space. Um, other quite successful, for example, like a True Group, True, uh, True, and CP Group. They are also working a lot with staff, for example, like uh, in the travel tech scene. Uh, there are a company called Ascent Travel, which is part of the Ascent Group. Uh, actually, they are startup, uh, external startup that has have been acquired and supported by, by true operations. And they are quite successful in terms of um, working with that. But right now, if you're starting to look into the space, uh, the, the, the fierce competition comes from the, the, the uh, financial and banking sectors. You can see that uh, companies like uh, SCB that has been transformed into SCBX. They are open uh, their space for startup at all levels. Uh, KBTG and KBank Group also working a lot with startup right now, co-invest with a number of startups from Singapore as well under their investment called Beacon Ventures. And also the BBL and other um, banks in Thailand, they are also trying to have a project that work with startup, for example, uh, Bangkok Bank used to have the program called InnoHub, which is trying to recruit staff from all around the world to work with the banks directly. So there are failure and such as cases, but um, with the atmosphere here, I think um, it's very broad, wide branch. All the ventures in Thailand has been open up for um, innovation uh, investment right now. Okay, thank you. Um, there is uh, a follow-up question from Puneet regarding the taxes. This one is back to BOI. So he's inquiring whether um, software license costs will be considered under dig digital services tax. And what about withholding tax and also VAT? Would those be applicable as well? Oh, I'm speaking, I, I, I'm not sure about this because... The, but anyway, uh, I, I have a contact point at the revenue department. If you just drop me the, uh, the email address, I can, I can find out and then I'll send you the, the answer later on. That, that, that would be okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. So thank you very much for the offer. So participants, if you have further questions um, that are very specific to your company, do drop us an email and we will direct the questions to the panelists accordingly so that you can also um, get your queries sorted out. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, are there other questions from the floor? If not, maybe I can also pose a few questions. So um, yesterday we heard about the opportunities in Thailand, especially in Bangkok. So what about the other cities in Thailand? Would there also be opportunities in the uh, not so uh, common cities within Thailand that will be also of interest to tech companies? This is an open question. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. I think uh, when you mentioned about the tech company, if, if you are the digital industry, of course, uh, right now, probably located your operation in, in Bangkok or around Bangkok, that would be a good idea because the, 
they are high, uh, ready equipped with the uh, very good infrastructure uh, to, to serve the digital industry. But anyway, as the uh, Dr. Chin Lu just mentioned about the digital value in EEC, that would be a kind of another option for, for them to locate their operation over there. And not only that, uh, the uh, digital value would provide a very good ecosystem for the digital industry, but also the BOI also be encouraged many companies to be there as a part of the digital a part of Thailand, which means they're going to get the additional incentive uh, uh, from the BOI as well. And extra incentive, particularly the personal income tax from the uh, EEC office as well. That's an, an, another option. But if you are the manufacturing industry, of course, the uh, EEC still is a good uh, location for you because uh, when considering the uh, proximity of the uh, 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 deep sea port and uh, uh, international airport, which is not far away, it will take about four to five minutes. And we are now under the process of construction of the uh, high speed train to link between the three international airports, which will be directly from airport to the EC as well. That kind of another uh, good option. And the last one, if you are in deep check, I will suggest you to locate your operation in Sai Park, which, of course, they are, uh, have a good infrastructure to uh, ready to serve for your operation. And of course, again, the BUI also the, uh, granting the additional incentive for those uh, deep tech uh, company to locate it in the uh, uh, side part as well. Let me add to Kun Narisha. Um, actually, as I said, that the EC area, ECD exclusively, is a proposed area for supporting digital startups and digital service provider to be able to locate there. With the, for example, if you are in energy technology, in industrial technology, that's a good uh, area because around that there are, uh, uh, I mean, hundreds, I mean, dozens of industrial assets, thousands of factories, and lots of people working around. I mean, the area. So that's a good place that you can start. I mean, um, doing, um, providing uh, digital transformation services, and actually as Depa already started to open two buildings in our area, in our um, Thailand Digital Valley project. It's already fully booked by startup actually. So I think um, that's quite a demand. And also um, um, living costs comparing to Bangkok is a little bit lower. And also other things is, is that uh, you can also have access to digital manpower, which is a number of programs have been supported in the area to build digital manpower to serve at the area. Other cities that might be interest to you, for example, in Chiang Mai, we have a very good um, uh, creative business and creative industry over there. If you look into going to the world of metaverse and then building a lot of digital contents, uh, animations, gaming, and those kind of things, uh, you can also find not just Thai talents, but also foreign talents over there in Chiang Mai. Um, for example, I also like Phuket. Phuket has been, I mean, uh, export already a lot of successful business, including Agoda, for example, that has been in Singapore. So with the, uh, the place is uh, a good place as well to start a business here, especially for expats that they can um, also uh, try out in terms of, uh, for example, like travel team space over there. Yep. Wow, sounds really exciting. All the different incentives and also all the vibrant ecosystem that are already available in different parts of Thailand. Yeah. So um, any other questions from the floor? If not, maybe I can have uh, one more question, maybe specific to Singapore companies. So it seems that uh, there are a lot of opportunities already. There are a lot of um, startups and ecosystems that are already well built already in Thailand. So where are the opportunities for Singapore companies, especially the tech companies? Are there any uh, specific industries that are, would be interesting? So for example, um, this business mission, we saw a lot of cybersecurity companies that are uh, targeting Thailand. Do you think they stand a chance? against the existing startups in Thailand? Yes, um, in terms of the cyber tech security uh, startups, there are a very good chance actually. 
uh, we are trying to promote, uh, to come up with a, a, a number of I mean, um, service provider in terms of cybersecurity right now, because um, that's a key area, one of key area, uh, including uh, the coming of the, I mean, we already have the cybersecurity law here. We also have this uh, PDPA uh, law in place. So with this uh, uh, changing legal uh, environments and legal frameworks, then uh, I think um, it's just important that all the uh, corporates get trying to go online, trying also trying to, they have to uh, uh, um, incorporate this kind of angle cybersecurity into their businesses process. Um, so, um, so I think um, that's a, a very good chance, especially for large corporates in Thailand that are looking for solutions uh, to working with the um, uh, cybersecurity. Other area that you might be also interested in Singapore companies is that um, in terms of digital content and gaming industry. Uh, that is uh, quite a booming industry as well. We work a lot closely with C Group actually um, to here in Thailand as well to trying to promote that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, industries because uh, what Thailand has been uh, doing in the forefront is that we have a quite a, a good manpower in that area and the creativity that we have here uh, is uh, quite a strength that uh, you can access to that kind of talents here in Thailand to build a bit uh, digital content and um, um, is for business, for example. Yep, I think it's undeniable. Thailand has um, been producing a lot of interesting um, advertisements. So I think the creative industry is definitely uh, a very uh, booming one. And of course, gaming as well. Um, we do have some Singapore gaming companies that are also interested to expand overseas. So maybe we can explore a little bit on that as well. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other questions. So maybe I can invite the panelists to give your final remarks to the audience. Maybe we can start with uh, Mr. Naruchan. Yes, uh, as I just mentioned in my presentation, that uh, we are uh, welcome all the, uh, particularly the Singapore tech company to be uh, here in Thailand, no matter in terms of the collaborating with the uh, Thai startup, as Dr. Sinwood just mentioned. And I think DEPA has many schemes try to cooperate between startup of Thailand and the high tech of the uh, Singapore company that would help a lot. And again, the BUI uh, try to uh, facilitate in terms of uh, uh, granting the uh, non-tax incentives and tax incentives as well. So that means uh, uh, we both are working together and, and then we try to facilitate as much as we can for uh, any uh, Singapore company would like to have your presence here in, in Thailand and collaborating with the Thai company. And the new area that I, I would mention here again is that as I mentioned on my presentation is that there we scheme for a BUI that would encourage the, uh, the company to improve their productivities. Uh, in terms of the uh, tech company of the Singapore would like to expand your market into Thailand, that would be a kind of a good opportunity as well. So because the expand for the Thai company and uh, using the probably tech company of Singapore product, that would be count on the uh, applicable for the uh, corporate income tax exemption as well. So that would be another uh, opportunity. Thank you. All right. Sounds interesting. And Dr. that, you know what? Yes, um, I think um, yeah, uh, I welcome everyone to think about Thailand in different from different angles in terms of digital investment right now. If you can see that the, our uh, uh, local market is quite uh, expensive as well right now. So and also um, there's a lot of demands in the country for digital transformation from factories around the countries um, to. Uh, uh, all businesses, all shop houses, they start to try to um, become um, uh, digitally transformed. So I think um, this is uh, the chance uh, for um, uh, global entrepreneurs to look into Thailand um, uh, as one of the countries to uh, do digital investment. And also um, I think uh, with uh, our better and uh, lower legal risk, in terms of um, 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 up, in terms of I mean for example regulations that has been not clear in the past right now everything is in place I think um, um, uh, you can see Thailand as one of the opportunity uh, markets to be expanded. Okay, yeah, thanks for the uh, tips as well. 
So I guess we have come to the end of our session today. So um, thank you once again to the panelists for your sharing. And now let me just go through some of the upcoming activities that we have from SG Tech's end. So we do have a Global Tech Business Outlook 2022 on the 13th of January. So this is, if this is something of interest to you, do sign up. And as usual, if you have any comments for our session today, if you want to reach out to the panelists, feel free to write to us. We are uh, available on go-global at sgtech.org.sg. You can also scan the QR code to find out more um, about, uh, to, to, to provide us with any feedback. And lastly, uh, do follow us on our social media, LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, and Facebook so that um, you can find out more about the latest activities that we have. All right. So thank you once again to the audience for stay, uh, staying till the end. And we'll see you on 13th January. Yeah, thank you. And thanks once again to Dr. Chinua and Mr. Narucha for today's sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.